Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to some more Rome Remastered. We've been backstabbed by the Numidians, as I'm sure you've seen last time, and uh, they've besieged Thapsus. The good news is I don't think they can attack it next turn, and uh, we do have Quintus Lepis here with the Second Legion, about to lift the siege off the city and uh, take vengeance for this heinous act that they've committed. Also, Thermon is still standing strong, somehow. Um, the Greeks actually gave up on the idea of attacking it. I think they're going to wait for this army to be retrained and then send three stacks in. The problem is they're going to have a little bit of a um, Leonidas and the, and the Brave 300 situation here that they just can't fit all the armies they want into the siege. So... I think as long as we get a Militia Barracks here, and as long as we retrain all of the Hastati, the city of Thermon, or the, sorry, the town of Thermon, soon to become a city, is never going to fall. Um, if I can keep retraining the men there, and Apollonia, after this, is probably going to build something like... Um, yeah, Public Order is really good, so they're probably going to build something like a Stables... Not something like stables, but a stables period, actually, because that's, that's the one thing that's missing in the region. And then we're going to be able to run cavalry back and forth, replenish them, and... Um, yeah, the, the, the First Legion is here to stay, definitely. And the Greeks don't want peace with us yet, so... We're going to need to beat back a few more of their armies, maybe even take another settlement before... Uh, before this war is ended. Um, but the Numidians are, are the, the thing that's really kind of bothering me, to be honest. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, I'm kind of glad that this happened as well, because now it forces me to go down here and not attack Carthage immediately. Even though, to be honest with you, it's probably the better option, because this isn't a particularly wealthy or important city. Carthage is. I mean, look at the amount of population. So, I don't know. But, yeah, anyways... I'm really bummed out that the Brutii family aren't doing anything, like, literally anything, they're just sitting there. It's kind of depressing, to be honest with you. Uh, the Germanic tribes are just on a tear, though, and I'm, I'm just hoping that the Julii can hold out. Oh! We're under siege. Yes, that's a shame. Um... They've gathered up the courage to attack me. I mean, I can beat that army easily enough, so I suppose that's... That's alright, but... Yeah. Oh, there's writing in Lepsis Magna as well. Interesting. Let's go talk to the Numidians and see what the hell is going on over here. Okay, so... Why can we not have just a ceasefire and, and re-establish our... Uh, No. What about this? Surely you just. <sighs> That's a shame. Okay, final tragedy. Uh... Oh, we have a turncoat Numidian chief. Nice. Plus twenty-five points to uh, movement points. For Aulus Scipio. Oh, what? You're here! Ooh, okay, now we can actually use. Open the character's bodyguard, huh? Okay. Um, move followers, yes, we can now do this. I would like. The Numidian Chief. This Numidian chief cannot be moved. Oh, 
Oh, you select the target first, I think. I think. Okay. In which case, not Quintus Lepis, but... Was it Cornelius Scipio? I, I really need to... I need to check. Uh, it was Quintus Lepus, sorry, it is, yeah, the, the, the two generals. So Quintus Lepus needs to get the Numidian chief. Quintus Lepus... do this like here this will take four turns to transfer over okay don't have a problem with that confirm right and now in four turns you're gonna get the Numidian chief nice um, the way this used to work, if you don't know, is you need to put both of the generals in question in the same army and then transfer them over through this screen. Like, you would literally just take this and drag it. But now you can actually do it without having the generals be in contact. Which is great. Okay, you know what? I'm not even going to give you the dignity of an actual battle. I'm just going to kill you. Or defeat you and have you teleport on the other side of the uh, on the other side of Africa, but you know, one of the two. <sighs> tsk tsk tsk. Okay. Uh, I'd also like the Hastati to exit and then re-enter the army. Oh, that's just annoying. It puts one there and then three back here. That's that's just. Terrible. Well, this makes retraining a little bit more manageable, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Good. Do I want any reinforcements in this army? I don't think so. Um, no, I would like, like, either two Triarii or two Auxiliary Cavalry or something, but the way it is now is, is actually just fine. Um, oh, I can make Ballistas. Ooh, I want a pair of Ballistas. I mean, okay, let's be honest with ourselves, not the greatest unit. I've tested them a little bit. I was, I was curious how the Siege Engines work. Um, I think they're a little bit worse, if I'm honest with you. Military Tribune. For Quintus Lepus. Oh, very nice. Um, I'll be brutally honest with you, I think the Siege Engines are a little bit worse in this game than they were in, um, in the other, in, the, in like, the original release, but they're still useful. Now, Lilibayum, you're at high taxes and very happy about it, so... Well, I'm not that happy about it, I'm going to move out some troops and then you're not going to be thrilled, but... Let's get land clearances. I think that should remove a little bit of the cultural penalty because it, because it adds another building and thus the ones providing cultural unrest are... Uh, numerically fewer, or put percentage-wise fewer. Maybe, I don't know. Um, okay. Get the Bay onto the ships. And get the ships down here. And then grab the Equite, the Hastati. Velite. Our legion's assembling quite nicely, honestly. Why are you not doing anything? That's that's really annoying me. 
Oh well. Um, question now is, do I sally out against the Greeks? Well, I can always try. And then see how things go from there. They have a ballista. I'll be fully honest with you, this is not something I expected them to have. But they do have a ballista. Armoured hoplites and a bunch of regular hoplites. This is a professional army, to some extent. The previous one we fought had a bunch of militia hoplites, which we broke very easily due to mass routes. I mean, you, broke, you break a couple of peltasts, a couple of militia cavalry, and the whole army just runs away because of chain routing. Hoplites, they're more difficult to, to break. They're much more difficult to break. And they're much more dangerous in a siege. You know, phalanx and just start shoving forward. They also have, like, proper armoured hoplites. That's... That's something else. Well, I don't have much choice, so let's sally out and see what we... Well, here we go. Once again, unfortunately, no speech because we're sallying out from a siege, but... Oh, you know, one of these days I might actually write one and, uh, and come here and, ins and inspire my men, but until I gather the willpower to do something like that... I'm afraid we're just going to have to do without one. Now, last time I was thinking about using the fact that the AI is not um, terrific at accounting for the existence of towers. But I didn't really do it. I mean, I... They were just sitting next to a tower that was killing quite a number of their men, I think around 10%. But I didn't just sit there for the entire battle and wait for the tower to do its work. I, uh, I just deployed my men normally, more or less. I just walked them, I didn't run, but uh, in a battle like this you can't really afford to run given that stamina plays such a huge and critical part of the battle, so... I think I'm actually going to do it this time round, though. The reinforcements have arrived. This is hopeful news indeed. Mm-hmm. Of course, the problem being the ballista, but I have a cure for the ballista. Okay, let's start sallying out. I'm assuming the Greeks are going to pull back to the hill over here and deploy there, which... I mean, they're going to be ridiculously difficult to dislodge from that hill. And they're just out of range of the tower, aren't they? Unfortunate. Oh, not, not, not the tower. Oh, not the tower. What am I talking about? Not the, the hill, but like at the foothold of the hill instead. Corner of the settlement. Maybe. I don't know, they look like they're still changing their mind. Let's get the equites out with the general. Let's also bring the Velites closer to the gate. Now, I don't like doing this, but I'm going to have to manually sort of... Uh, position all the Hastati due to the differences in unit size. But that's okay. I'm sorry for the very clicky keyboard. Should be especially clicky now that I'm doing all this manually. 
There we go, that ought to do it. Uh, I think we're out, we're out of range of that ballista. Wherever it is. Ah, there it is, right. Yeah, should be out of range. How do I do this? But like genuinely, how do I do this? You gotta admit, this is a gorgeous sight. <laughs> this is just an absolutely gorgeous sight. I mean, it's not the graphics, it's just the, the, the gravitas of the moment, you know, just the endless stream of cavalry leaving the settlement and, and you know, going into position, and, you know, they might be clipping a little bit, they, they might look unrealistic and ugly, especially for horses, but who cares, it just looks epic, you know what I mean? Modern Total War games can pull this off way better, by the way, they could. Um... You, you could have the exact same thing, like, the animations work, the animations are great. Um, do you know what the only problem is with, with modern Total War games and, and scenes like these? You don't get scenes like these because the maps are tiny. When you sally out, you get teleported on the map and you're already in formation. Like, on the one hand, it is a little bit tiring to have to do this every time you sally out from a siege, but on the other hand, A, it's a realistic thing that you have to you have to think about. I mean, if you are inside and you want to fight the enemy besieging the settlement, you do need to get out somehow. And the Greeks, should they choose to, could actually take advantage of this and attack me now. Um, you know, whether you do or, or don't do something like that is a, is a different question altogether, and it's a, it's a tactical problem, but... Like, the thing is, you don't get to see anything like this, because it's, it's the maps are tiny and your troops get teleported around all the time, so, yeah. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. I mean, look at this, even when they're not all uniform, and then there's a lot of variety in, in the units, and both in terms of uniform and weaponry and, uh, and all that, it still looks bloody amazing. Legio Eterna Victrix. <gasps> ah, sorry. Um, just childhood memories of a not that great movie, but <laughs> it is what it is. I actually have a pretty terrible movie. Um, Excuse me for a second. I'll say excuse me for a second while trying to hide the fact that I'm yawning and you know, that didn't exactly work out all that well. Uh, let's put all the cavalry on one flank. The game advises you not to do this by the way, but you know, actually I advise you not to do that either. Uh, but I am a trained professional, so don't try this at home. We're gonna have the town watch be a reserve unit for the flank over here. And then all the cavalry are going to go to one end, and that will indicate to the Greeks that I'm going to try and make a flanking maneuver with the cavalry, but uh, the problem in this specific battle and with this specific Greek army composition is that they can't do anything about it. Now, I would like to move up a little bit. Not too much, not in range of the ballista, but just a little bit. And what I'm thinking of doing now is, first of all, approaching them to see if they're actually willing to fight me. 
because sometimes they will evaluate the situation and go, you know what, we don't fancy our chances like this. Let's let's retreat and, and get some more reinforcements, which they might do. But if they don't, given the fact that they have 49 cavalry that can realistically do... that can realistically fight, right, in, in melee properly, I'm thinking of just taking all the cavalry around and into the ballista. In doing so, I will have mucked up the perfect line of a phalanx that is here, and also, I'll probably be able to get at the Peltasts. Break this, break these two, maybe kill the general, go uphill and just run away from them. I don't see what they can do to stop me. There really isn't much they can do to stop that, so yeah. I'm going to group all of this as one unit. Which didn't come in a locked formation for some reason. Okay, strange, but okay. Maybe deploying in a wedge wouldn't be a bad idea here, so that we can, you know... But I'll just rely on micro. Ooh, uh, speaking of, I'd like to go like that. A little bit tighter. And... Moving forward. Okay, so there's nothing in terms of enemy range units here that can stop me. There is the Militia Cavalry, which I might be able to catch off guard and, and catch before the, the good skirmishing AI kicks in. Ooh, I did! I actually did. Okay, and they, they are going to wipe out probably like one unit of, of Equite doing this, but... I know we broke them already. It's numbers. It's it's the number of, of units they're fighting that's, that's scaring them, probably. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. They're now out of position to fight with the infantry of the Legion. And in doing so, we have completely negated any sort of counter-cavalry force that they might have. I want you to do that, and they have one more unit of, of Militia Cavalry back there, but who cares, right? Who cares? Ballista's panicking, not sure what it's supposed to do. This is a very Warhammer Total War kind of tactic. Make sure you get the artillery first, because it's the most valuable piece in the enemy army, but... Be brutally honest with you. I'm a little bit scared of that ballista. The enemy general is slain, and now his men fear us. Okay, stop right the there. Our cavalry is doing unbelievably well, just want to point this out. I want you to run to that position, and that should... Excuse me, no. That position, and run. Did you get the orders? Alright, good. Uh, perfect, basically. Hit them. Hit them. And this battle really came down to understanding the composition of your forces and your enemy's forces. Now, vital, vital thing needs to happen. Support those guys over there. Surround as many 
Hold. Why is skirmish mode enabled? It's supposed to be disabled by default. Why is it enabled? The game just changed my settings. I mean, truly, I have a saboteur in my ranks. Okay, something I don't really understand. This unit of Equite did incredibly well. Broke a unit of Peltas, wiped out a unit of Militia Cavalry. Other unit of Equite, virtually the same experience, not virtually, literally the same experience, lost half its men. Doing half of the work. Like, literally doing half of the work. They didn't have to fight a... a unit of Peltas. While, while doing this. It's just, just what? is going on. Okay, I think now is the time to start splitting up our units. And this is tragic, sad, and also incredibly realistic. Um, and for those of you that don't know, I will actually tell the story. So, history lesson incoming. Just, you know, you have been warned. Um, battles like these did actually happen historically in real life. Um, and battles like these were particularly tragic for the Greeks for two reasons. One, the Romans had found a great tactic to actually just counter their phalanxes. And the tactic proved incredibly effective at, you know, just countering phalanxes. Um, but if that wasn't enough, the Greeks, a few times in these battles, surrendered. Now, surrendered is a problematic term here, at least for the Romans. Uh, there are two options. The Romans didn't care or didn't know. In the Greek world, in the Hellenic world, troops doing this, running with their pikes lifted to the sky, are retreating or surrendering. Now, how do you surrender if you run away? Well, it's the heat of battle and all that. Uh, you want to get away from the person that's trying to stab you with his, sh with his, uh, with his sword, right? It's natural. When they do this, they are surrendering or withdrawing from the battle, and, you know, they, they've conceded victory. The Romans didn't know this, or didn't care, we're not sure. Uh, you know, history being written by the, the winning side and all of that. Um, so what the Romans did is they just kept fighting, and they wiped the Greeks out. Because uh, in their eyes, you know, either... Option A, uh, the Greek, you know, they, they're going to live and fight another day, we can't allow that. Option B, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to just get rid of the military force of the enemy, and also we could just conveniently say, well, we didn't know that's how they surrendered, and, you know, too bad, so sad, Greeks are done for. Um, whichever two of these was, um, was the case isn't all that relevant nowadays, because the the results speak for themselves, really. Um, the, the phalanxes were crushed under the weight of the Roman legions, and uh, I think under Lucius Mumius, I think, um, was, was the, the legate's name the Romans scored final victory over uh, over the Greeks and basically ruled the world from that point on with little in the way of opponents other than you know themselves in, in, the, in the form of civil wars for quite a while the Parthians would become a problem of course and then there would be very violent and, and difficult wars in the East but you know, if we're honest, 
they were never a real threat to Rome. They were a threat to some of its eastern provinces, and, you know, you, we, we, we can't have that and all that, but... Never to Rome herself. Okay, so Cleon of Sparta is dead. We failed the mission to take Sparta, but at least we killed Cleon of Sparta, so... I guess that has to count for something, right? And I think we're just going to end the battle this right is here. Yeah, that's that's just a massacre, honestly. This is this is not a victory. This is a massacre. Um, but it comes down to just understanding the composition of your army and understanding the composition of the enemy army. Uh, no amount of manoeuvring can save the Greeks from a devastating charge in the rear with four units of cavalry. Sorry, five units of cavalry. Uh, I'm including the general. Uh, th there's nothing they can do. The phalanxes are too slow. The ballista is too static. Uh, the only way they can they can kind of win is if they want to really desperately defend the ballista, just like draw a circle around it with various units of, of hoplites, but that just makes the army combat ineffective because third or more of your force isn't going to participate in the battle, they're just going to defend the siege engine, which can't do that much damage anyway. Um, and then the Peltasts would still be unprotected, and the Militia Cavalry will be unprotected, so, you know. Um, there is a lesson to be learned here for, um, not just for Rome Total War, Total War, game, Total War games in general, but for life situations. Assess the problem, right? Assess your strengths, assess the enemy's weaknesses, act on that. It's pretty much like that for sports, video games, everything. So, yeah. So, uh, glad that we were able to use such a, a fairly simple, straightforward tactic to uh, just wipe the floor with the, with the Greeks. And the game doesn't seem to want to let me pause the recording. <laughs> Uh, please. I think I think the the loading is really taxing on the hard drive, and it's having a difficult time actually telling OBS. Whoops! I just dropped a USB flash drive that I was fiddling with while waiting for the loading screen. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think the OBS is now having a hard time actually. Well, the hard drive is having a hard time telling OBS to stop recording because the, the, the loading is so taxing on it. It's, it's probably like stuck at 100% and uh, the pause command is sort of queued behind the, the loading screen. Well, not the loading screen, but behind the... the um, behind Rome to the wall, the, the process and the task manager, probably. Is what I'm guessing. It says the recording's still going on. I, I don't know how long it's... It's probably still recording, to be honest with you. I, I can't know until uh, <laughs> I look at the file and... Alright, after an excruciatingly long loading screen and uh, the game refusing to pause for quite a while... Uh, not, not um, uh, sorry, OBS refusing to pause the recording for quite a while... We have this. This is the situation now. Greeks have retreated and... Well, they're going to retrain their armies, is is the thing, but I'm more than happy to let them and have them come at Thermon again. Because next turn, I'm going to retrain my Hastati. And a couple of turns after that, I'm going to ret retrain all the Equitae. And you're going to be sorry you were born. I'm, <laughs> I'm only partially joking, too. Um, tell you what though. Right. These guys were on a scouting mission. I wanted to see if there's anything up here, and I wanted to see if there's, um, if there's Greeks up here, or, or if, if Macedon controls this, and it is Macedon. Okay, Gaius Scipio is now a good commander. Well, I certainly would agree. Matter of fact, he's a great commander. Uh, six stars, four influence. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay. Uh, recruitment is done. Let's... Ooh! Senate officers uh, changed. 
So, Thermon's been besieged, Numidia has besieged this, we've taken care of both of the problems. Enemy army routes, okay. Senate office assigned, Praetor, Cornelius Scipio, and Questor Gaius Scipio. Congratulations to our new Questor. Um, definitely deserved it after beating the Greeks multiple times at Thermon and uh, thus securing Rome's borders and all that good stuff. Oh, that does mean we no longer have an Aedile in office. That has gone to Amulius Julius. And the consul is Flavius Julius, or one of the cons. Uh, should be one of the consuls, but sure, the consul. It's just, it's just a weird thing to say. Is um, is Flavius Julius? Pontifex Maximus is Aulus Brutus, and I guess that's kind of fitting, because the only thing the Bruti I have done so far is sit in Tarentum and Croton and pray. I'm not even joking, that's literally the only thing they've done. Oh well. Okay. I want to try and negotiate with the Numidians again. Our patience is limited. Never mind. I want to try and negotiate with the Be Greeks quick. again. Our patience is limited. I know your patience is limited. You still don't want to cease fire. How about bribe? If we may have a private word. No. Until next time. No, sorry. Um, bit too expensive. But that would have been very cool. That would have been very cool. I, just out of curiosity. Be quick. Our patience is limited. Yeah, so Captain will disband his army and and join my faction. I don't want the Captain, I want the whole army. If I had to pay 19,000 for the whole army, I would consider it. Because this army can then attack Athens and take it on the same turn because of the Ballista. That's a big thing, and then hold it probably for quite a while, given the walls and everything. That's... that's a big thing, right? That's that's quite big. But... Considering, considering it's just this, and it's just disbanding the army. Eh. Okay, what is this? Publius Scipio has been inactive for... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Don't worry about it. He's waiting for his men. Besides, didn't he just receive Velites as reinforcements? He hasn't been inactive, that's like... That shouldn't count as, as being inactive. Macedon, hopefully... Ceasefire? Yes. But here's the thing. Like, ceasefire's good, but you know what's better? Changing, exchanging map information. Um, and you know what's also better? Uh, offer... Compensation. No, 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 no. Can I request compensation? I can't. Okay. Okay, never mind. Um, I guess there is nothing, no compensation to request. I attacked them. I took their city. Uh, but let's not talk about that right now. Uh, huh. I'm assuming... Requesting any of these towns would be... I can take both Salona and Sagestica. Or Sagestica. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I'll go with Sagestica. Um, it's demanding, but I could give you some money, and then we'll sort of come to... Uh, to an agreement. I'm not sure I want those settlements, though. They're going to be tough to defend. They're going to, there's going to be Dacians up there, and 
Uh, I don't know. I think I prefer 15,000 gold. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Alright, like 9,000 gold. Ten thousand gold. So how about that, eh? Let us now talk reasonably. One thousand four hundred denarii for seven turns. That's uh, this is embarrassing. Oh, well, the, the other stuff is the same, right? Yeah, ceasefire and trade information. That's that's around ten thousand, right? That's nine thousand eight hundred. In total. Acceptable. Very much acceptable, I think. Yeah. Oh thanks. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. That's that's very acceptable. I have no intention of, of attacking you anytime soon. Oh crap. I'll be able to save the soldiers, but I'm not happy that happened. Not at all. Turns out the Carthaginian Navy is still kind of a threat, isn't it? Whoops. Alright, well... At least I'm, I'm going to get that fight against the Greek Navy, which has been avoiding me for a while. Yes. Victory at sea! Blood, death, honor, victory at sea! Um, all that good stuff. So, okay, just, just between me and you, Vic, this is kind of meaningless. But shh. Alright, retrain this, and... I think we now just put everyone on the ship, right? Yeah, pretty much so. Okay. So, we'll wait one turn for the ship to get fixed, and... Uh, you know, I won't get that. Extra ballista, I think one will do just fine. I mean, I would like an extra one, but not really in a position for that. Diplomatic information. Ceasefire between a whole bunch of people. That's alright. Uh, let's take a look at the construction report. Syracuse and Thermon. Obviously, Thermon, huge priority because it can now retrain the Legion station within it. Uh, and then I think I'm going to get like a Governor's Palace first. Stables would be good, Temple to Saturn would be good, but I think it's, uh, that first. And then over here, in two turns we're going to be able to get some more horsemen. Syracuse on the other hand, We have no more buildings that cause a cultural penalty. So Syracuse can be at, high ta at, a, at a high tax rate. Very good. And then... Yeah, I think a market will do, will do just fine. Okay, lovely. Which then leaves this. And you know what? Much as I hate the Numidians for betraying me, Carthage must be destroyed. Carthago de lenda est. Can I be of service? Carthago, sorry, right? It wouldn't be Carthago, not the. Um, Carthago de lenda est. All right. Noble master. Be quick. That's Our patience though. is limited. Offer compensation. 
Give Thapsus or give 345 denarii. I'll give you 345 denarii. Surely you just. That's I. I did I expect you to? Did I uh, expect you to accept? Absolutely not. But figured I'll give it a go, eh? All right. I think that's it. I think that's uh, that's us done for now. We'll just. Uh, yeah, just go next turn. Oh, idle, idle resource, yes. The spy. You're pretty old now, aren't you? Oh, no, you're not. 36, never mind. Campaign's not been going on that long, after all. Uh, well, since I have a pretty good idea about what's happening in Carthage, why don't you go over to the west a little bit and show me how these cities are, are doing. So, Sirta uh, is a uh, large town. Not bad. Certainly worth taking. Worth making another legion for to, to go and conquer. Ready to sail. Questionable. I think we should, though. I think we should start making another legion basically immediately. Oh, I don't want to build merchants. They really don't contribute much. They, they really, really don't. Um. And what I'm going to do differently here is I'm going to go with four archers for this army, I think. Vilate is a cheaper. Actually, no, they're not. Vilate is a more expensive. Which is kind of understandable. But they have the same missile attack, and these guys just have a bunch of ammo and a huge amount of range. They're utterly defenseless in, in melee, though, and where, whereas the Velites are actually pretty darn good. But, uh... Yeah, like... I could just keep the archers behind all the infantry. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, and that's what we're gonna do. And I have the income. I, I definitely have the income to, um... To make another army. Now, what are you trying to do? Well, I suppose we'll see. I'm hoping that Carthaginian army go, gets back into the city and tries and, and defend from inside, because that way I'll have at least somewhat of an amusing siege. Please? No. The stupidest attack known to mankind just happened. I'm fairly certain. It's happened! Oh dear Lord in heaven, it's actually happened. Can you believe it? It is happened the bloody sod off the, sea is ours. the brutii did something they took their one ship with admiral nero fine admiral met him personally in a battle over here and they've blockaded sparta It's a new day for the Roman Republic. It is a new day because something unbelievable just occurred. Okay, here's what I kind of want to do now. Um, 
first of all, I want to figure out where that large army went. It's not here. There it is. What do I know about it from just the diplomat being there? Uh, okay, if I talk to her, are you Be gonna? Quick. Our patience is limited. Are you gonna figure out more about it? No, thought not. Hmm. I kind of want to get aggressive now and attack this army and wipe it off the face of the earth because they have a lot of depleted soldiers there. See, it's only half strength. And yet it has 20 out of 20 units. So, yeah. I think it will be very smart to attack it now. Problem is, what if this comes after me? Well, the truth of the matter is I can probably beat it. Attack! Ugh. Ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Okay, well at least this guy finally has the Numidian Chief, which allows him to reach Mahar Maharbal. And kill him, hopefully. Nope, they're just gonna retreat once again. They're just going to retreat once again. Okay. In order to stop that from happening. Velites and then Hastati as garrison. And you onwards to Carthage, but for real, but for realsies this time. This legion to Greece. Specifically to Corinth, I think. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Uh, and you can actually get retrained at Thermon. They do have a, they do have docks there. Okay, good. I like that. I very much like that. Uh, and then construction report. So Capua needs to build something. Let's get that done. Uh, Public order stabilized finally. Well, somewhat stabilized. So I think I'm just gonna skip Triarii, honestly. They're not worth the trouble. I mean, you need a large city in order to retrain them, and they're good, but they're not that good. So I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip over the Triarii, and I'm gonna build wooden walls here to improve the public order a tiny bit. But it's not for the public order, it's mostly for um, aesthetics. And then Masana... I don't know. Arena wouldn't be bad, Shipwright wouldn't be bad. Yeah, let's get a Shipwright. Lilibayum. Lilibayum can get... can get... Forum... Walls, four or more walls, basically. Okay. Like the idea of a forum, like the idea of walls as well. We'll get walls. Again, aesthetics. It's gonna be three turns of greed and vanity. How's income looking? Shaky. Shaky at best, but it's gonna get better. Uh, I'd also like to take a look at taxes in various provinces. Yeah. This needs to be increased. This is alright, this is alright, this we can't change. Good. So keep an eye on Capua. Taxes there are gonna be a little bit tricky, but... Everywhere, everywhere else is doing fine. 
If I had just fought that battle manually, I would have saved myself so much trouble. With the with the Numidian general down south. I should blockade the port of Corinth, you say? Uh, can I get some money for that? What am I getting? You know, will be rewarded. Okay, probably going to get money for that. All right. The Gauls have bloke blockaded. The Gauls have blockaded Rome. <laughs> Not something I expected to see, honestly. Oh. This also not something I expected to see. I'm pretty sure the Greeks just gave up at this point. Return to your city for crying out loud. Try and defend it. What are you doing? All right, I think we're going to call the video here. Uh, let me just do all of the stuff that I need to over here. So, put these guys in the thermon, and the game starts misbehaving in terms of performance just as I'm about to end the video on the recording session. Uh, truly wonderful. Um, okay, that's all good. I was thinking I'm probably going to pick a fight with the Greeks somewhere around here, but the thing is, they've just left. I mean, they've, they've, they've straight up just left. So, tell you what, if you're going to leave, Larissa is a remarkably big city. And, uh, I'm going to besiege it. And I'm going to take it next turn. And, uh, we shall see whether you want to react to that or not. And I can afford to do that because I have another army coming to defend Thermon next turn. This fleet can't stop it. There's two ships here. Okay. Beautiful. Carthaginians. Yeah, just a random ship. No actual forces on board. Alright. Good. Good. And uh, not only this, but we'll also be able to uh, complete the Senate mission by blocking the port of Corinth. So really everything is going swimmingly. Uh, apart from... The stuff in Capua, which isn't going so swimmingly. Doesn't this increase public happiness? Yeah, it does. So, like, this should be fine next turn, right? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Um... Right, finances. Good! Actually, pretty darn good. Mind you, got to remember that... Uh, how much of this is coming from Tribute again? Turn income merchants. A grand total of 56. Truly a wonderful unit, the merchant. Population growth per turn. Population growth per turn. Governor's influence. Trade routes. Mining. We have no mining anywhere. Yeah, don't we still have tribute from the Macedonians each turn? Because I could have sworn we did. Anyways, something I, I, rem I um, said I would do ages ago. Uh, check out the family tree, because, well, now there's actually stuff to look at. Unfortunately, when you look at it like this, you can't really click on any of the, any of the guys and, and do anything about it like, examine them or whatever, you can just sort of look at the tree, which, yeah, right, that's alright, I suppose. Uh, so, let's see here. Cornelius Scipio is still alive and kicking, he's the faction leader. Quintus Scipio, his eldest son currently, after Julianus died in battle. Uh, 
I believe resides in Syracuse or Masana, one of those two, just to govern it. But then, then we get into the interesting stuff. So Quintus's eldest son, no, his son-in-law, Quintus Lepis, probably one of the finest commanders Rome has ever seen, or the Scipii family has ever seen. Um, and then Quintus's brother, Gaius Scipio, the finest commander now on paper, and, you know, props to Quintus for, um, for Quintus Lepus for uh, defeating the Carthaginians, but Gaius did a way better job at Thermon, and he did it several times, so, yeah. I'm kind of thinking, make Gaius Scipio great again. No, I'm kind of thinking, make Gaius Scipio the faction heir. But, problem with that is, Faction Air is not the best military commander. Faction Air should be the most influential and the best governor. And currently that is Quintus Scipio, so... Yeah, there's, um, there's not much I can... Uh, I can do there. Uh, here's the thing, though. Gaius Scipio. No wife. Why... Why? Why did you not marry? Genuinely curious as to why you haven't married. Can't have that, my dude. Also, I'm highly curious as to why none of my guys here are having children. Um, I know that this is a thing in... I'll end the video soon, I promise. I know I, I said I would do it like ten minutes ago. Um, I know this is a thing in Rome that it this the number of generals is kind of loosely based on the number of settlements you hold actually, uh, so that when I conquer more settlements, suddenly everyone's gonna ha gonna start having children. I'm gonna start adopting people too, and that's great. But I would like it not to be the case, to be honest with you. Um, I would really like for a more realistic family tree mod if at all possible. Um, now, I'm not sure how interested people are in something like that, because there are gameplay balance reasons behind something like this. General's Bodyguard costs money, quite a bit of money, to uh, to maintain. I, I think there's a decent number of people that don't know this. They think generals are free. Nah, they cost like 200, 300 maintenance each. It's quite a lot of money. Um, actually, I can prove it, I think, in a second. But, I mean, look at this. He's... She's 23, you're 29. Okay, you've been a military commander most of your life. You haven't exactly had time to go home and, and make babies. Fine. Quintus Scipio, two kids. Alright, fair enough. What about you, though? You've been the governor of our capital for as long as I can remember. 28, your wife is 22, no kids. Gaius? I mean, you fought battles, but you've also stayed in Thermon for ages. You couldn't find a wife and just settle down for a bit? Have some kids? Would have helped the whole family tree situation, honestly. You know. I mean, you never run out of generals, not really. And uh, if you do run out of generals, there is a very simple fix to it. Or if, if you want if you want to apply it, that is. Uh, you can recruit generals. Um, you can't do it in the vanilla game, but you can go into the game files and just s s turn like Delete the words false and type in the words true when it comes to general's bodyguard and then being recruitable. That's it um, And you recruit them and they're not just general's bodyguard They do become an actual general like with the character with the traits in the family tree and everything Yeah it's fascinating. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if they, they go into the family tree or not. I'm, I'm not sure how the game handles that, but they do count as a family member, essentially. So, yeah. I mean, they, they work exactly the same as any other as any other character. They can have kids, um, they can get married, they can accumulate traits, followers, everything. So, yeah. Kind of a shame that... Uh, the family tree hasn't been really reworked, or that there's not a mod to fix it out, to, to not to fix it, it's not broken, but not to, to have tweak it a little bit already, but, you know, it is what it is. 
Um, I would like quite a number of things here, honestly. Quite a number of things here. Um, let's go with a shipwright, I think. It'll increase our economy by a little bit and uh, get rid of some of the cultural differences. Apollonia has finished its stables. Lovely. Which means you can then focus on something entirely different. Camille Farming. It's a pretty small town. Uh, well, it's, it's a large town officially, but it's pretty small, like 3,000 people in it. Let's, let's get it to grow a little bit, I think. Uh, all right, I think that's where, that's where I'm gonna what I'm gonna call the episode. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll see you all next time. Please remember to like, subscribe, down below if you enjoyed the video, and want to stay tuned with the rest of the content that I produce on the channel. But uh, until some other video, have fun, take care, and bye bye.